Hi, this is the first of two summary slides for this whole section on the adoption curve life cycle thinking uh, that we have and making sure that we are totally in tune with the current life cycle realities of our industry and that we are um, in sync with that and, 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 and selling exactly what the customer wants to buy. So I'm going to summarize with a lot of questions. I think that we've answered a lot of these, but but uh, there are also questions that, you know, sometimes you don't have an immediate answer. You just have to sit with them. You have to live with them. You have to live into them before you finally say, you know what, I'm going to do it. So the first question is, um, if 1% or more of our biggest, best, most progressive customers have said, look, we have supply chain objectives. We have decided we want to buy a certain way. We have certain metrics you have to meet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're starting to consolidate vendors. And we are reactively, like little puppy dogs, trying to please them. And hopefully we hang in there and, and we survive. We're, we're one of the winners in the, in the vendor consolidation game. Um, and that's great. But now we'd have to ask our question on a life cycle curve. Remember the, the bell-shaped curve of of open-mindedness. If, if, if the front end of the customers here are starting to do something, when is the next customer going to um, say, hey, I want to do the same thing? And shouldn't we, instead of reacting, anticipate and proactively get on that? And, and that gets us to number two, question number two, which is where actually are we as a sales organization uh, in, and also in relation to our average customer, our leading edge customers, where are we in the life cycle, the adoption curve, of being able to both on the buy side of our business and the sell side, think in terms of supply chain, service value chain solutions. And how do we get more hip and current and, and move ahead on the life cycle in that area? Third question is, how do we measurably know the cost to serve uh, of our best customers and our worst customers and so forth, and why the, the most profitable customers have such low cost to serve as a percent of sales and why the biggest losing customers have such a high cost to serve. We have to get better at that, and that whole, the whole next section is going to be addressing that particular question. Number four question is, can we proactively nudge most ready customers into buying better. So this is the moment of truth where a customer says, here's last look, and we say, hey, look, if you want to play the game, I get last look plus one point for me, the rep, and one point for the service horse I'm riding, and, and, and I have made my case as to why, even though our price is higher, we're still the best total economic value. The customer may say, you know, I will concede. I intellectually understand that, but emotionally, I'm still bugged by the fact that you're paying, I, I, you know, I have to pay a higher price. I don't want to pay a higher price. Okay. Fine. It doesn't have to be either or. It can be and both. But if you want a lower price, you have to work with us. You have to marry us. You have to give us 100% of the volume. And then we have to work together to get my cost to serve dramatically lower, which will lower your total procurement costs, which also allow me to provide you a lower price. You know, are, are you ready to be nudged? you know, into out of the transactional game box and into let's let's get married box. So I, that's just a question. How many how many of our customers uh, are are on the cusp, you know, where we could potentially nudge them into that next uh, next uh, let's get married box, assuming that we can do it. Five, we're not going to be able to nudge anybody into a sustainable win win partnership if we don't have basic service excellence. So we're leading from service value strength. It's a prerequisite, but it's not going to be distinctive unless it's niche focused. So the next section is going to be, well, there's a set, uh, two sections from now. There'll be a customer nicheonomics kind of case uh, clips that, that we'll review and help us to answer this question so we can make sure that we have distinctive service excellence to uh, be a candidate for marriage. Six asks, does the sales force from the, the honchos, branch managers, sales managers on down, do we have the selling skills, the, the confidence, the fluency, the supply chain flexibility, and do we have the right incentives to want to go out and be able to pull this all off? If I'm just going to pay everybody to go get margin dollars, they don't care about cost to serve, and they don't, they're not going to get it. They're not going to sell it. It's just too easy to just go get margin dollars with high cost to serve, and the company loses money. But that's, that's what we're paying the, the organization to do.
Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of people that intuitively know that's going on. They don't like it. But, you know, again, I, you know, if that's the way you want to pay me, I'm going to do what you, 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 you want me to do. Um, number seven, how many reps want to, can reinvent themselves to stay relevant? I think, really, most people want to stay relevant. And I think most people can do this. I just don't think that they know how to do it, why they have to do it. And, and they, they don't have a, a sort of a simple step-by-step. -step. Big journeys get scary. Oh, let's climb that mountain. Oh, this looks just too overwhelming. Well, okay, but while we're thinking about climbing the mountain, let's just take a few steps towards the mountain. And once we start to move and take steps, you know, long journey starts to become pretty simple. So hopefully these e-video clips will help that process. The next question is, number eight, what type of leadership, education, Analytics, total team involvement, incentives will be necessary to support this migration. Again, that just sounds overwhelming. Big journey, huge mountain kind of thing. But again, video clip by video clip, if we have the right analytical tools so we can, we can zero in on one step at a time, all these things are possible. It all melts away. And then one last question is, if our customers are starting to call themselves vice presidents of supply chain at that level of the corporation, Really, that means we need a vice president of service value solutions. So who is our vice president of service value solutions? Who's going to be the leader in going after the five, 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 five most profitable accounts, five most biggest losing accounts, five most important target gazelle accounts, and do those audits, those inner business process audits and recommendation reports, and make sure that, that uh, stuff happens and we move along the supply chain life cycle adoption curve. So those are questions to think about and live into, and hopefully these e-video e clips will help. Thanks.